This video is brought to you by Captivating History. Mesopotamia has a long and complex past, and many empires called Mesopotamia home. Because of its lengthy history, the question of what caused Mesopotamia to fall is a complicated one. The land of Mesopotamia was still in existence up until the end of the First World War. On August 23, 1921, Mesopotamia was renamed when the British-backed Faisal I became the first king of Iraq. Mesopotamia is referred to as one of the cradles of early human civilization. The English translation of the Sumerian name is the land between the rivers. The rivers referred to in the name were the Tigris and the Euphrates, and Mesopotamia lay in the fertile crescent that stretched from Egypt to Israel. This land was rich in resources, and human civilization flourished. Many cultures rose and fell in this bountiful land, the first of which was the Sumerians. Evidence suggests that the Sumerians lived in Mesopotamia for as long as humans populated the planet. Eridu, the first city, dates from the 54th century BCE and is considered to be the first city in the world. Historians believe the Sumerians to be the first true civilization. They were the first people to keep records writing symbols, and pictures on clay tablets using a script known as cuneiform. The important Sumerian city-states loosely united to form a powerful civilization and peaked under the rule of King Gilgamesh in 2700 BCE. One of the oldest pieces of literature in existence, Epic of Gilgamesh, concerns his adventurous life. The Sumerians were around for four and a half millennia, that's over double our current era, the archaeological finds from this culture are incredible, and we can see how migration and climate change affected our earliest civilizations. In around 2350 BCE, a new empire arose, the Akkadians. At first, they lived alongside the Sumerians, but gradually the Akkadian culture eclipsed that of the Sumerians. Along with the influx of new peoples and cultures, the Sumerians' main crop, wheat, started to fail as the soil in the region became more saline. The Sumerian farmers eventually switched to barley, which could tolerate the increase of salt in the earth. But by this time, many Sumerians had died or been absorbed into new cultures. Many of the great civilizations of Mesopotamia were built on the foundation laid by the Sumerians, and the Sumerian language, myths, and culture were around long after the last Sumerian was gone. While the Sumerians are often seen as the world's first empire, some historians credit the Akkadians with this title. After the Sumerian peoples faded away, the Akkadians gained supremacy in the area. Eventually, the Akkadians expanded through military exploits and united the indigenous people of Mesopotamia under one rule. After around 180 years, the Akkadian Empire collapsed. While there is not enough physical evidence to pinpoint an exact cause, historians have proposed many different reasons. The most prevalent theory is that climate change, namely a drought, weakened the Akkadian Empire which thrived on rain-fed agriculture. It is also thought that the Akkadians spread themselves too thin and could not maintain control of all their conquered territories. The collapse of the Akkadian Empire split most of the indigenous peoples in two. Assyria formed in the north and Babylonia in the south. This split would lead to decades of fighting, with the dominant power of Mesopotamia being snatched back and forth between the two empires. However, the Babylonians would go on to create one of the longest-lasting empires in history. Babylon went from being a small and unnoteworthy town into one of the most famous empires in the world. Babylonia peaked under the rule of Hammurabi, who reigned from 1792 to 1750 BCE. After Hammurabi's death, Babylon began losing territories, first to an Akkadian-speaking king and then to the Assyrians. The Assyrians had been a secondary power in Mesopotamia since 1900 BCE, when the Temple of Ashur was built. While they had been around for a lot longer, most historians agree that this was the founding of the Assyrian civilization. They traded in iron, which gave them the edge, literally, during and after the collapse of the Bronze Age. After the death of Hammurabi, the Assyrian kings tried to restore order to the surrounding territories and assert control over them. In 1726 BCE, King Adasi managed to regain control over Assyria's borders and even brought some Babylonian regions under his control. Over the next couple of centuries, Assyria maintained stability and peace, but in 1500 BCE, 
a group called the Mitanni appeared, seemingly from nowhere, stuck between the Mitanni kingdom and the Kassites, who were gaining power in Babylon. The Assyrians briefly fell under Mitanni control. Around 1595 BCE, the Hittites came on the scene. The Babylonians, who were already under attack from the Kassites, who spoke an isolated language and were not native to Mesopotamia. When the Hittites sacked Babylon and continued on to the Mitanni territories, the Kassites took the opportunity to take over. The Assyrians were able to gain influence with the Mitanni and expanded once more. Their military victories built up a tradition of warfare within the Assyrian kingdom. Meanwhile, back in Babylon, the Kassites were on their way to becoming the longest dynasty in Babylonia, although they never had complete control of Babylon. Instead of fighting, they maintained peace with their neighbors, including the Assyrians. This peace did not last, and eventually the Assyrians would try and expand into Babylonian territory. In around 1200 BCE, the Bronze Age started to collapse in Mesopotamia, and many civilizations in the region were wiped out. The strength of the Assyrian Empire ensured their survival this time. Assyrian king Tikulti Ninurta I, 1244 to 1208 BCE, ruled Babylon for eight years and was the first king of Babylon to be ethnically Mesopotamian. Like most Assyrian leaders, he was a military king and interested in preserving and promoting Assyrian culture. By the end of his reign, the Assyrians controlled most of Mesopotamia, although he could not keep control of the city of Babylon. Assyrian governors continued to rule Babylonia until late in the reign of Adad Shuma Usur, 1216 to 1189 BCE, when it slowly became a semi independent empire again. Toward the end of the second millennium BCE, the Bronze Age collapse affected most of Mesopotamian civilizations, and many of them ceased to exist altogether. Alongside the waning popularity of bronze, Climatologists believe that a part of this collapse was a climactic shift that caused droughts. Another theory is that the eruption of the Icelandic volcano Hekla III impacted the climate in the region. The Assyrians would survive, however, despite losing territories. As the entire area was in crisis, there wasn't anyone in a position to take advantage of the power vacuum. Babylon had many rulers. In 1124 BCE, a ruler came to power that was not only successful in his own time, but whose name is still recognized today, Nebuchadnezzar I. He built up Babylon's defenses and beautified it, although it was his namesake, Nebuchadnezzar II, 605-562 BCE, that would be one of the people accredited with creating the famed Hanging Gardens of Babylon. From 911 BCE to 607 BCE, the Assyrian Empire was at its peak. It became the largest and most brutal empire in ancient Mesopotamia. In 747 BCE, it expanded dramatically, conquering many territories, including Egypt and Syria. During this time, Babylonia rose and fell and had many different rulers until 729 BCE, when the Assyrians decided to incorporate Babylonia into their empire. This assimilation did not stop the jostling for the Babylonian throne. The Assyrian Empire was so large that it was under constant threat from many different powers. The Assyrian kings tried ruling Babylon from afar, forming a fragile alliance with the Babylonian kings under their control. Their successful campaigns had distracted them from the threat of the Babylonians, and several uprisings in Babylon forced the Assyrian king to return and assert control. A group called the Chaldeans were determined to take Babylon, and periods of stability were punctuated with war. In 689 BCE, an Assyrian king named Sennacherib was sick of all these rebellions and reacted by destroying Babylonian temples and cities, looting as much as possible. His response was so extreme, he even removed the soil from around the Euphrates, sending it downriver to destroy the Babylonians' farming capabilities. This act would plunge Babylon into economic disaster. But unfortunately for the Assyrians, the Babylonians survived, and in 626, the Neo-Babylonian Empire replaced the Neo-Assyrian Empire, ending the Great Assyrian Empire once and for all. In 539 BCE, a Persian king called Cyrus the Great invaded Babylon. Cyrus had been amassing power since around 550 BCE, and Babylon was under the rule of an unpopular king named Nabonidus. Nabonidus managed to alienate his people, his military, and the elites with his decisions and leadership style. 
There are many accounts of how Babylon fell to the Persians, and we may never know the truth. In all likelihood, the Babylonians fought and lost to the Persians at a place called Opus. With their army defeated, the other cities surrendered without a fight, and Babylon became part of the Persian Empire. The Persians divided the Neo-Babylonian Empire into provinces, Assyria and Babylon being the main two. Babylon continued to attempt to assert independence until Alexander the Great led the Macedonians into Babylon in around 331 BCE and defeated the Persians. By the time Alexander arrived, many of the great Mesopotamian cities had already fallen out of use, and Babylon itself was losing its importance. Alexander the Great died in Babylon in 323 BCE at the age of 32. After his death, Babylon faded away, not with a bang, but with a whimper. While life continued for the people of Babylon, the region would continuously come under the control of new empires and countries and never regain its independence. While Mesopotamia continued to exist until the 20th century, it can be argued that its glory days were over even before the death of Alexander the Great. Most of the Mesopotamian culture had been overtaken, and other great civilizations dominated the world stage. The Romans eventually took over the region in 116 CE, followed by the Arabic Muslims in 651 CE. During the mid-19th century, British and French adventurers were inspired to find the great biblical cities, and the ancient wonders of Mesopotamia started to be rediscovered. When addressing the question of why Mesopotamia fell, the best answer is probably the length of time it had been an influential area. The Sumerian culture began to flourish around 4000 BCE, so Mesopotamia had already been an ancient civilization when Alexander the Great invaded 3,669 years later. Over those millennia, climate change, cultural shifts, and a whole lot of wars meant Mesopotamia became less important as a center for civilization. The fact that Alexander the Great, and later the Romans, wanted to conquer this land was probably more due to its historical significance than its resources. The vast scale of Mesopotamian history is overwhelming and awe-inspiring. Today, the Fertile Crescent is threatened by climate change and modern irrigation systems. Irrigation set in place in the 1950s dried the Mesopotamian marshes, and in 1991, Saddam Hussein's government further drained the marshes as punishment to the Marsh Arabs, who inhabited the region. Recent DNA evidence suggests that the Marsh Arabs are actually the descendants of the ancient Sumerians, but by 1992, around 90% of the marshland had disappeared, displacing these indigenous inhabitants. While efforts have been made to restore these important marshlands, they are still only about half their original capacity. After supporting human civilization for over 6,000 years, the Fertile Crescent may be destroyed by the very species that it helped establish. To learn more about Mesopotamia, check out our book, a captivating guide to ancient Mesopotamian history and civilizations, including the Sumerians and Sumerian mythology, Gilgamesh, Ur, Assyrians, Babylon, Hammurabi, and the Persian Empire. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free mythology bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.